In 2008, historian and scholar Evelyn Hammonds became the first African American and the first woman ever to be appointed Dean of Harvard College. But long before she broke those barriers, she found herself questioning, why aren't there more women and more women of color in science? That led me to begin to think about um, studying the history of science. Um, I didn't really know much about the history of science at the time, but I found out that that's the place where I could ask questions about race, about gender, about the diversity of the scientific community. These questions were just burning for me. So it was both the personal and professional kinds of issues sort of came together for me, and that led me to study history of science. Hammonds studied physics at Spelman College in Atlanta, electrical engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology, physics at MIT, and then went on to get a PhD in the history of science from Harvard University. I think that at the end of the day, here we sit in the 21st century, a really important set of issues are still a set of cultural assumptions within communities of physicists that make it difficult for the dominant group, that is white males in physics, to think that other people can have the same capacity to do the work as they do. Culture change is very, very difficult. And so I think we've done a lot of things. We've had mentoring programs, we've had summer programs, we've had all kinds of programs to, to help women fit better into the community. But my position at this point is the guys have got to change and really begin to be more open and we need more leadership about this. That certain kinds of behavior toward women, certain kinds of stereotypes about what women can and cannot do just have to be dismissed. People who can do science should be able to do science. According to Hammonds, for the scientific community to successfully diversify, leaders within the field need to think harder and do more to achieve greater diversity in science classrooms and the workforce. I think we often talk about it as the diversity problem as opposed to the diversity challenge. Um, because we need, we have so many issues and so many problems that we need to solve. And many of them today involve technology, involve scientific knowledge, scientific expertise, mathematical and quantitative skills. So we ought to be trying to make sure everybody has an opportunity to develop those skills because we're going to need all of those, everyone's talents to live in an increasingly technological world. So I don't think we can afford to leave behind the big swaths of the American population, or the world's population for that matter, if we're going to solve the problems we need to solve.